In a world where many are obsessed with status symbols and fleeting trends, some of the wealthiest people in the world don't flaunt their fortunes by wearing luxury brands. In this video, you'll discover the secrets behind the elusive mindset of why old money people don't wear luxury. We'll explore their fascinating approach to style, spending, and the rarefied world of luxury brands, uncovering a perspective that's both refreshing and thought-provoking. By understanding the principles that guide old money's attitude towards luxury, you'll not only gain valuable insights into building true, lasting wealth, but also discover a path to a more purposeful and fulfilling life. One that prioritizes quality, legacy, and genuine contentment over fleeting status symbols. Let's first clarify the distinction between old money and new money. Old money refers to families or individuals whose wealth has been accumulated and carefully nurtured over multiple generations, often tracing back to long-standing businesses, strategic investments, or inherited assets. Think of old money families like the Rothschild, Rockefeller, Roosevelt, Morgan, and the Mars family. One rather unknown example of old money is the Vanderbilt family, whose fortune dates back to the late 1800s. The first known member of the Vanderbilt family is railroad tycoon Cornelius Vanderbilt, who lived from 1794 to 1877. Even today, their legacy endures, with family members living in stately homes and enjoying a level of privilege that few can fathom. Yet, despite their immense wealth, you're unlikely to spot them flaunting the latest designer handbags or dripping in flashy jewels. In contrast, New money describes those who have rapidly acquired their fortunes within their own lifetimes, typically through entrepreneurial ventures or successful careers in the modern economy. Think of individuals like Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, and Jeff Bezos. Now, let's move on to the four elusive mindset habits of old money individuals and why old money people don't wear luxury. Number four, association with nouveau riche. One of the primary reasons old money avoids luxury brands is the association these goods have with the nouveau riche or new money class. Historically, members of the old money elite have sought to distance themselves from the perceived vulgarity and flamboyancy of those who flaunt their newly acquired wealth through the conspicuous consumption of luxury goods. This aversion stems from a belief that true wealth should be understated and that overt displays of luxury can be seen as gauche, tasteless, or a sign of insecurity about one's social standing. Examples. Imagine a reality TV star who has just hit the jackpot with a lucrative endorsement deal. They might be tempted to splurge on a fleet of flashy sports cars or a massive mansion adorned with gold accents, which is what old money families consider nouveau riche behavior. These lavish displays are often seen as an attempt to validate their newfound wealth and gain acceptance into elite circles, something old money families view with disdain. And number three, focus on discretion and understatement. Old money families place a strong emphasis on discretion and understatement in all aspects of their lives, including their style and consumption habits. They believe that true wealth should be understated, and that overt displays of luxury can be seen as attention-seeking. This mindset is often instilled from a young age, with children being taught the value of humility and the importance of not drawing unnecessary attention to their financial status. Example, if you take a stroll through the affluent neighborhood of Beacon Hill in Boston, where old money families have resided for generations, you'll notice an understated elegance in the architecture, with stately brick houses lining the streets each one exuding a sense of timeless sophistication without any ostentatious displays of wealth. The residents might drive well-maintained luxury vehicles from decades past, favoring quality and durability over the latest flashy models. But beyond these surface-level reasons, deeper philosophical underpinnings shape old money's aversion to luxury goods. Principles that have guided these families for generations and allowed them to maintain and grow their fortunes through economic ups and downs. Stay tuned as we delve into the core values that underpin their approach to wealth and consumption. And number two, appreciation for quality over branding. 
Old money individuals have a deep appreciation for quality craftsmanship and timeless design. They tend to value longevity, durability, and functionality over fleeting trends or flashy branding. Their focus is on acquiring pieces that will stand the test of time, often favoring bespoke or custom-made items over mass-produced luxury goods. Example, imagine inheriting a meticulously crafted clock that has been in your family for centuries. Its intricate woodwork and intricate mechanisms have been carefully preserved, representing not just a timepiece, but a piece of history and a tangible connection to your ancestors. Other common family heirlooms include jewelry, collections, art, furniture, books, journals, music instruments, and more. These are the kind of heirlooms that old money families cherish, a testament to their appreciation for quality craftsmanship and timeless design they pass on for generations. At last, number one, generational stewardship and legacy. Families with old money often view themselves as stewards of their wealth, with the responsibility to preserve and grow it for future generations. This long-term perspective influences their spending habits, as they prioritize more heavily on investments, business ventures, and buying assets that maintain and grow in value for many years to come. Example, imagine a sprawling ranch in Texas that has been in the same family for over a century. Instead of squandering their wealth on fleeting luxuries, the family has invested in expanding and maintaining the ranch, ensuring a steady stream of income and a legacy that can be passed down to their children and grandchildren. They might also fund trusts or scholarships, ensuring their descendants have access to the best educational opportunities, further cementing their commitment to generational stewardship. At the heart of old money's philosophy lies a profound understanding of the true nature of wealth. Old money recognizes that genuine wealth is not measured by the accumulation of material possessions or the ostentatious display of luxury brands. Instead, it is a mindset, a way of life that values discretion, quality, and a commitment to preserving and growing one's legacy for generations to come. In a world often consumed by the pursuit of material possessions and status symbols, the old money approach offers a refreshing perspective, one that emphasizes the importance of cultivating purpose, fostering meaningful relationships, and leaving a lasting impact. By avoiding the lure of luxury goods, old money families can maintain a sense of humility, focus on what truly matters, and cultivate a deeper appreciation for the enduring values that have sustained their wealth over time. This shows that the old money approach to luxury offers a refreshing perspective in a world often obsessed with status symbols and fleeting trends. Their way of life reminds us that genuine wealth transcends material possessions and that lasting satisfaction comes from cultivating purpose, discretion, and a commitment to quality and longevity. So here's a challenge for you. Take a step back and examine your own relationship with money and possessions. Embrace the principles of old money by prioritizing quality over quantity, investing in timeless pieces that will endure, and cultivating a mindset of generational stewardship. By doing so, you'll not only develop a more purposeful and sustainable approach to wealth and unlock a path to genuine fulfillment, but also a life rich in experiences, relationships, and a lasting legacy that extends far beyond fleeting status symbols.